Hey everybody, how's it going? It's the Ham Radio Dude, episode 5, and today we're going to discuss how to manually program an FT4X radio from Yesu. Real quick, I just want to give a shout out to the people listed on the screen here, a list of the names. These are the new subscribers to the channel. And guys, in the last month we've had 53 subscribers. It's a good start. Uh, we're almost to our 100 subscriber goal where I'm going to give away that free Sherry device mentioned in episode 1. Again, thank you so much. I really appreciate the subs, and hopefully continuing on, we'll continue to grow and have a good time in this community. What I have here is the Yezu FT4X. The Yezu FT4X radio was made in China, and it was meant to compete with the Baofeng radios at a price point. Uh, I should mention it's only about the size of your hand, so that makes it a great opportunity for you to throw in your backpack and go. Now, however, when you get this radio, there is no programming cable. That makes it kind of a difficult thing to be able to program with a computer unless you buy or make a cable. Uh, and if you're going to have it in your backpack as a go kit, you might not have a laptop in your go kit. So there's many reasons you would want to actually know how to program this radio via the front panel display. What you'll see on the screen is you'll see the radio itself, but uh, to the left, you're going to see in the upper left hand corner a frequency, which is the N9 HEP repeater in Crystal Lake, Illinois, operating at 145.330. Uh, that's what we're going to program into this radio today. And the first step for programming your radio is to turn your radio on. Once your radio is on, you'll go through a menu here, but uh, what you'll see is you'll see the letter A, the letter B, or memory. Uh, that's VFOA, your VFOB, or your memory. And to change it all, you got to do is go down to this VM button, VFO memory button, and you can go to B, and then you can go to C, or uh, excuse me, 1, which is memory, A, B, memory again. Okay, so for this uh, purpose of the tutorial, let's just be on uh, bank A, BFO bank A. Uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is actually type in the frequency that we're going to want to program. All right, now that we have the radio turned on and we're in slot A, VFO slot A, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to type in the frequency that we're wishing to program. 145.330. Oh, and I'll tell you, it's a little bit different upside down. Uh, now that we're on 145.330, we haven't programmed anything yet. This is just in like a temporary memory bank or manual memory bank. So now that we had the radio turned on and we manually set the frequency, we need to hard set or program it actually into the radio. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your radio and flip it to the side where the push to talk button is, which is right here. And on this side, you'll see two other buttons. The bottom button with two lines, or it looks like an equal sign, is you're going to hold that down for just a couple of seconds. And that's about 1,000, 1,002, somewhere around there. But what that does is it puts you into the Yezu radio menu. And getting started, we're with option one here, which is APO. And what the APO does is it sets the transceiver to shut down if it's not in use for a certain time frame. All you'll have to do is, again, go to your side panel display. Uh, hit the function button, and once you hit it for once, you'll see that it's set to a certain time. By default, yours will be set to off. I have mine set to four hours, and I can change that by using the up and the down arrows. And then when I feel like I am in a setting that I like, so for example, I like my radio to shut off after four hours not being used, I could hit the side function button again, and it's set. After we got our APO set, what we're going to do is we can page up and we can page down. We're going to page up here and I'm just going to go through some of the most important settings. Uh, step settings two and three have to do with arts operations or if arts operations are enabled, that would give you the opportunity to be alerted when there is a radio within close proximity to you that also has the arts functions enabled. Again, anytime you want to change any of these settings, all you have to do is click on that uh, function button on the side. And so, for example, on step five here, beep, I hit the function button and I have my beep set to off, but I could always change it by using the keypad arrows to go up and down. I'm going to leave it off for now and hit the function button one more time here. Uh, what I'm going to do here, let me scroll up to step 28, and I, it's kind of a pain, like I mentioned, because everything's in alphabetical order. It would be beneficial if everything was actually uh, in use of, like, how frequently things were used. Um, so here we are at step 28 on menu menu item 28 and it's the RF squelch and I probably should set this because I do have a little noise in, in the house at the moment uh, I'm going to hit the function button again and I'm pre presented with my, my squelch is actually off at the moment so I'm going to use the arrow up 
and um, that repeater is pretty close to me. I'm going to set my, my squelch to S4 level, and then again just hit the function display. So now we have the frequency inputted, and we have the squelch inputted. Let's go ahead and just make sure that the repeater shift is all set correctly. And to do that, we have to go up one to step 29, which will be repeater automatic repeater shift. And let's just make sure that's on for this situation. Uh, automatic repeater shift is a great tool because if it's within certain frequencies, it'll automatically adjust for the recommended repeater shift on those frequency ranges. So I do have automatic repeater shift set to on. Again, up and down will change it to on or off. I'm just gonna leave it on for now. And we need to now make sure that it's actually set to a negative six offset. To do that, we're gonna go up to step 30, which is repeater frequency. And repeater frequency, once you hit the function button, should show you 0.6. And the reason it shows 0.6 and not negative 0.6 is because we have automatic repeater shift enabled and we're on VHF, so it generally assumes that it's a negative offset. Go ahead and hit function again to get back into the menu. And even though it is set to automatic repeater shift and we're on VHF, if you were to type in a UHF repeater frequency, uh, the automatic repeater shift would automatically show up as 5. So, for example, if we had programmed a frequency here, I don't know, 442.500, for example, and we were in this menu and we clicked here because we're set to automatic repeater shift, uh, it would show 5.0. It doesn't now because we're still on UHF. You could always change this, though, by using the up and down arrows and then hitting the function key to the side. Uh, the next step here is, is if we go up to let's see i think it's 36 yeah 36 is the squelch type and if we go to squelch type and we hit the function key again we're then presented with some options and here you could change your your different types of tones so t-tone versus t-squelch and so forth dcs uh you could even have it so you have no tone because there are certain repeaters that don't have a tone uh for this tutorial we're going to go ahead and use t-tone and we're going to hit the function button again to get out of there and then we're going to go to the next step, which is going to be to go into step 38 and the TN frequency or the CTCSS, the actual tone that we're going to put into the radio so that we could actually transmit and receive correctly on the frequency. So I am in step 38 or menu item 38, TN freak. And if I just go ahead and again, I hit the menu or the function button, I am presented with 107.2, but it says R. Um, I actually want to go over and I want to hit the VM button, which then puts me into the T mode. So now when I set it to 107.2, I'm in the correct mode. Uh, the transmit is the one producing the tone and not the receive. I can go ahead now and you could hit the receive too if you needed to. Uh, for the sake of this tutorial though, we are just putting in 107.2 into the transmit. And then we're going to hit the side function button again to save that. And now we're back into the menu. We go up a couple here. We have the TOT or the timeout timer. The timeout timer is nice because if you're talking too long on the radio, it'll actually time you out. And so I have mine set to three minutes, but you could set it up and down whatever way you want. I'm just going to leave it at three minutes for now. And back into the menu by hitting that function button again and going up. You can set your TX power. I do like to set my TX power to low for this repeater. And the reason I do that is because the repeater is so close, I don't need any more power than low power. But you could actually set your, your power to a different level in this menu item. We now have our TX power set. And I'm gonna have you go ahead and hit the function button. Hold it down for about two seconds and it's gonna bring you back to the VFO mode. Now that we're in the VFO mode, we can confirm we're on a negative offset. We have a T code set, we're on low power, and we have a frequency. After confirming all that data is correct, what we want to do is actually physically set it into a memory bank. And in order to do that, we're going to hold down the VM button or the VFO memory button. And when we hold it down for just a two seconds or so, we're going to get a screen that starts flashing. Now you might see something different than me. The reason is, is uh, 20 is my first available memory bank. So the radio defaults to 20. You could always change which memory bank you want it on by going up and by going down. I'm going to leave it on 20 since that is available. I'm going to need to type in the repeater name, and that could be a little tricky. Let me allow uh, myself to elaborate. Uh, for example, this six right here, so I want to type an N. So I'm going to hit one, two, three times. I'm going to hit six, and it shows up an N. And that's not the hard part. The confusing part is you then have to hit the function button, just a quick tap, to go to the next 
there we go, to go to the next um, line of what you're typing in. So then the next thing is nine, and function, and then h, which is going to be one, two, three. Hit the function again. Got to hit the e, so one, two, three. And finally, we have to hit the p. And like I said, it's really difficult upside down. So I have N9 HEP into the radio at this moment. Now that we have N9 HEP inputted into the radio and we think we have all our settings correct, we're going to hold down the VM button one more time. And we now get this option for mem in. And in theory now, when we switch uh, from VFO A to B and then to the memory channel, we should see N9 HEP on here. And the best thing to do now to make sure everything is working is to transmit. This is W9FFF testing. And everything looks good. So that's it. That's a, there is two programming AAZU FT4X radio. I realize I could have done this video a lot quicker if I would have just went through all the settings and said, hey, here, this is what you do, this is what you do, this is what you do. But I kind of wanted to show you certain options in the radio and how to change them so you're more aware when you are in the field it becomes a little less inconvenient for you. So with it, that's the video, guys. Thanks so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing, checking out this video, and I hope to continue to provide very good content for you. If there is anything you have suggestions on, let me know in the comments below. Thanks a lot, and 73.